Hello again! Today I'm going to show you how to make 4-nitro-bromobenzene. While it is very useful in chemistry as an intermediate, it has no common uses that I know of. Some of the possible transformations of this compound are bromination to 3,4-dibromonitrobenzene, reduction to 4-bromoaniline, further nitration to 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene and there are many others. This preparation demonstrates one of the most common reactions of aromatic compounds, an electrophilic aromatic substitution, and is sometimes used in schools as a demonstration of this type of reaction. Actually, this procedure is based on the experimental procedure I found online in a short PDF file that is copied from a textbook. The link to this PDF is provided in the video description. The PDF in question doesn't just provide the practical procedure, but also explains the mechanism and theory behind this reaction in a concise manner. Anyone interested in what is going on in this reaction from a theoretical perspective should read it. In the image you can see the chemicals I used for this reaction. On the left, 100 ml of bromobenzene. You can see half of it in the 50 ml graduated cylinder and the other half is still in the flask it came in. In the middle, 600 ml beaker, there is 90 ml of azeotropic 68% nitric acid. And in the 100 ml graduated cylinder on the right, there is 90 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid. The bromobenzene I bought online, but there are also two videos about the synthesis of bromobenzene on YouTube. The links to these videos are in the video description. The nitric acid I also bought online as 55% technical grade nitric acid and then distilled it to get the 68% azeotropic acid. It was sold as a professional fertilizer and was a discount purchase. But unfortunately the site I bought it from no longer sells it. The concentrated sulfuric acid I obtained locally a few years ago. These are all the chemicals I needed for the reaction. But for the workup I also used water and 96% ethanol. I performed this reaction in a tall 600 ml beaker and monitored the reaction temperature by a thermometer. I began by cooling the beaker with the nitric acid in an ice-cold water bath. While stirring the now ice-cold nitric acid, I added the sulfuric acid. Not surprisingly, the mixture heats up, but not drastically so. After the addition of the sulfuric acid was complete, I waited for the nitrating mixture to cool again. And when it was close to room temperature, I began slowly adding the bromobenzene with the help of a 250ml separating funnel. I was careful not to add the bromobenzene too quickly, because the nitration reaction is exothermic. During the entire addition of the bromobenzene, the temperature of the reaction mixture didn't exceed 40 degrees Celsius. At the beginning, everything was okay and the drops of bromobenzene dispersed and as the reaction proceeded, solidified. However, soon the magnetic stirrer was overwhelmed and could no longer stir the mixture. At this point, I still had a lot of the bromobenzene to add. As I don't have an overhead stirrer, I proceeded to stir the reaction mixture by hand and added the remainder of the bromobenzene. After the addition was complete, the reaction mixture was again stirrable, but this is because the unreacted bromobenzene formed a second oily layer. I continued stirring the mixture at a temperature of 42 to 48 degrees Celsius for one more hour. During this time, the oily layer solidified and magnetic stirring again became impossible. I covered the beaker with plastic wrap and left this mixture to stand overnight at room temperature. The next day, I poured the reaction mixture into approximately 550 ml of water and then washed the beaker with another 250 ml of water. I stirred the suspension with a glass rod for maybe a minute and then proceeded to filter it. Because my largest Buchner flask is 500 ml, I had to empty it a couple of times. I then washed the solids on the Buchner funnel with 200 ml of fresh water. As you can see, some oil gets through the Buchner funnel and I assume this is a mixture of unreacted bromobenzene and its nitrate derivatives. But the majority of the product is in the solids in the Buchner funnel. But the solids are not pure 4-nitro-bromobenzene. They are a mixture of isomers of mononitro and dinitro-bromobenzenes. I expect that the main components of the solids are 4-nitro-bromobenzene and 2-nitro-bromobenzene. 
To get pure 4 nitrobromobenzene, I have to purify this mixture by crystallization. The damp solids had a mass of 158 grams. I transferred the damp solids into a 1 liter beaker and began dissolving them in 96% ethanol. I heated the suspension to boiling and kept adding 96% ethanol until all of the solids dissolved. It turned out that the 1 liter beaker wasn't big enough and I had to transfer the content to a larger 2 liter beaker. I ended up using approximately 1070 milliliters of 96% ethanol to get everything to dissolve. I ended up with a nice yellow clear solution. I covered the beaker with plastic wrap and left it standing at room temperature overnight. The next morning I was greeted by a beautiful mass of crystals. It looked as if the entire content of the beaker solidified. I broke up the crystalline mass with a glass stir rod. After the material settled to the bottom of the beaker I decanted approximately 550 milliliters of the clear solution. You can see the beaker with the decanted solution on the left and the beaker with the remainder on the right. I did this to reduce the volume of liquid I had to filter. I then proceeded to vacuum filter the remaining suspension. I washed the solids on the Buchner funnel with 100 milliliters of fresh 96% ethanol. The product looked really nice but I decided to do a second crystallization. The damp product after the first crystallization had a mass of 104 grams. I transferred the damp product back to the 2 liter beaker and again while stirring and heating dissolved it in fresh 96% ethanol. This time I needed 520 milliliters of 96% ethanol to get a clear solution. And as you can see this time the solution isn't yellow but almost colorless. I also managed to capture the majority of the second crystallization on video. The video of the crystallization you are watching isn't sped up, this is real time footage. The next day I filtered the suspension and washed the solids in the Buchner funnel with 50 milliliters of fresh 96% ethanol. The product was then spread out on some paper and left to dry for two days. What you see here is the dry product. I got 74.6 grams of dry 4-nitrobromobenzene. This represents a 39% yield based on the bromobenzene used. As they say in commercials, but wait, there's more. I don't like throwing things away when they can still be used. So I gathered all the filtrates and the oily mixture I got at the beginning after the filtration of the quench reaction mixture. I put everything into a 2 liter reaction flask and distilled off the ethanol. I was left with a crude mixture of nitrobromobenzenes weighing approximately 100 grams and I used this for the preparation of 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene. I followed the procedure described on Science Madness by user unintentional chaos. The link to this procedure is in the video description. The main difference is that he used pure bromobenzene as the starting material and I used my crude mixture of mostly mononitro bromobenzenes. I put the notes on my other modifications of that procedure in the video description. I am sorry but I didn't really take much video of the procedure as I was starting from an undefined mixture instead of a pure material and as such the procedure would be of limited value to someone that would want to repeat it. After crystallization, filtration and drying I got 73.3 grams of dry 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene. This represents a 31% yield based on the 100 milliliters of bromobenzene. But how do I know that the materials I isolated are what I claim them to be? Well, I did two things to ease my mind about the identity and purity of my products. 
I took the melting points of both products and the melting point of 4 nitro bromo benzene was 123 to 125 degrees Celsius. The melting point of 2,4 dinitro bromo benzene was 63 to 65 degrees Celsius. So both melting points were quite sharp but a bit off their literature values. But still, this is a strong indicator of my product's identity and purity. The second thing I did is I developed two thin layer chromatography plates or TLCs. The one on the left was developed in a mixture of ethyl acetate and petroleum ether. The one on the right was developed in just petroleum ether. The petroleum ether I used is just distilled gasoline. I used the fraction with the boiling range of 65 to 85 degrees Celsius. There are four lanes on the left TLC. Left to right they are. Lane 1 is the sample of the concentrated mixture that I used as a starting material for the preparation of 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene and it should contain predominantly mononitrobromobenzenes and some dinitrobromobenzenes. Lane 2 is the 2 times crystallized product 4-nitrobromobenzene. Lane 3 is the crystallized product 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene. Lane 4 is the filtrate after the crystallization of 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene and it should contain predominantly dinitrobromobenzenes. There are three lanes on the right TLC, left to right they are. Lane 1 is the sample of the concentrated mixture that I used as the starting material for the preparation of 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene. Lane 2 is a so-called co-spot. That simply means that you put two things in the same lane and this is a mixture of lane 1 and lane 3. Lane 3 is the crystallized product 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene. As you can see, my products produce nice single spots and are apparently free of the most likely contaminants we can see in the other lanes. Despite being careful, I managed to expose myself to 2,4-dinitrobromobenzene. I know this because on several places on my skin I developed blisters that were very itchy. I took pictures of the most photogenic blisters for your viewing pleasure. Anyone that has ever been exposed to poison ivy or poison oak will be familiar with this type of reaction. For anyone interested, the blister on the right forearm was especially itchy. So, for a quick recap. From 100 ml of bromobenzene, I produced 4 nitrobromobenzene in 39% and 2,4 dinitrobromobenzene in 31% yield. I have plans for both products, but it will take me some time to actually realize those plans as I have a lot of other things I want to do first. So stay tuned and I will see you on the next one. Bye!